Today I'm putting a brand new image generator to the test. The hype is big, it's called Rev.Art. And yes, that's Rev, like the French word to dream. And yet my band is Downtown Reverie, so I'm contractually obligated to have to try this one out. So, but for real, um, Rev.Art is a company out of California. And what it really, it runs on a higher diffusion technology designed to turn the weirdest prompts into polished, high res um, in images. And it, honestly, looking through their community that they have here in the Explorer section, ones like this, I mean, the photorealism is insane. So this is looking really, really good. So in this video, I'm gonna do my first reaction. So I have some prompts set up that I'm gonna use. I have never generated any images with this yet. And also, just for the sake of comparison, this one reminds me a lot of Leonardo. So what I've done is I already have these uh, images generated that I'm gonna try to generate here on Rev set on Leonardo, so that way we've got a little point of comparison. So, um, but without further ado, let's hop right on into it. So we're gonna move from the Explore on over to Create. All right, so my first prompt, I'm gonna start ultra simple with these prompts, and then I'm gonna get much more complex by the fifth prompt. So this first one here, something real simple, just a red apple. Let's see how it does. Now let's peek here and see how Leonardo did on a red apple. Pretty good. So you can see it still look, looks a touch animated. Um, I really like the shadows on this one and the light. Um, still, you know, very good. This one looks like the most animated so far. But let's see how Rev did here with their red apple. So, um, all right, that one. All right, so it's kind of on the simple side, which again, I gave it a very simple prompt, but I think that one looks really good. Um, you've got a good reflection underneath it. Um, this one, wow. All right, so if that if that's not a stock photo, I don't know what is. That looks like a real photograph. That one I'm, I'm pretty impressed with. Best one yet. Um, this one again here looking good. I see no issues. I like the lighting coming all the way around, the shadow on this side. Again, very realistic. And good. That was an overhead shot. So that was a little nice, clever, creative shot. Every single one of these I would believe to be stock photography. So um, Rev, you're off to a great start. All right, let's check out my second prompt here. Now, as I do these prompts, I'm going to ask more and more out of it and add more complexities to it. Supposedly, that is Rev's strength is that you can get as kind of crazy as you want. So what I'm gonna do is click away from, so if I'm on an image, then I can actually edit the image, but if I wanna make a new one, if I click away, now I've got a spot for a brand new prompt. All right, so a futuristic city skyline at sunset in the style of a watercolor painting. So let's see how it does. So while it's generating, let's pop on over to Leonardo and see how Leonardo did with that same prompt. So here we go, we've got a futuristic, you know, these skyscrapers looking futuristic, definitely watercolor. Um, I'd say it nailed all the elements here, but again, you know, Leonardo's a strong contender in this world. Actually, I like that one the most. That one looks really good. Um, cool. All right, so let's see how Rev did. All right, Leonardo's in the lead on this one, I will tell you. So it is, what you know, it's kind of watercolor. Um, it, it's not as realistic as Leonardo was. Um, I would say this is more, more than watercolor. It almost looks like kind of colored pencils. Um, let's see some of these other ones. Yeah, that one looks very colored pencil-esque. Um, not too impressed with that one. So let's see, let's keep on moving down. Um, that one's got a little more kind of watercolor, but it looks just a bit more animated. I mean, you go back to what Leonardo made and I think these just look much more impressive across the board here, but all right, last one here, let's see how it did. Um, pretty good, big TVs on the buildings. That's kind of fun, but this looks more like a storyboard sketch than anything, but I guess you could call it watercolor. I don't know. Um, I guess it's all based on the prompt that I gave. So, all right, let's keep moving on. See how we're, uh, we're looking with each of these here. Um, all right. So again, these prompts, as I go through, they're going to get harder and harder. All right. So this is one actually that I didn't think Leonardo did that good of a job. And I'm hoping that Rev is going to do a better job because I wanted to do a lion made of clouds walking across a lavender field under a crescent moon. This one's actually pretty reminiscent of one of Rosh's favorite prompts where he always does a husky running through a field of daisies. So this is a lion, but but the caveat on this is the lion to actually be made of clouds walking across a lavender field. So let's see how um, Rev does, because I'll tell you, Leonardo did not make a lion out of clouds. They just made a lion, put him in a lavender field, and they didn't quite have the crescent moon in the background there. So none of these, you know, I thought it was a good looking lion, but it felt like it was like a stock photo of a lion just put into a field. So nothing was like abstract that it was made of clouds or anything. So let's see how Rev did. Ah, nice. Okay, good. See, this is what I was hoping for is that it would listen a bit more to the detailed prompt where it actually made these lions of, of a cloud. Now it kind of looks like they just took a cloudy day and then cut 
a outline of a lion in it, so that's that's okay, but they didn't like make the lion out of clouds. So let's see some of these other prompts and how they came out. That one I think looks much better. That's cool, where it actually shows the mane and the hair, but it actually makes it look like clouds. And now we've got a dark lavender field. We've got a slightly crescent moon there, but not too much, so... Um, that one, again, it looks like a lion cutout. They got the crescent moon. They got the daisy field, or I'm sorry, the lavender field. And last one, yeah, was another one of those kind of cutouts. So I would say one out of these was really cool. This one would be definitely my favorite. So bouncing back, see, that's what Leonardo had. You could, I mean, isn't it amazing that the same prompt, the differences that all these engines give? All right, moving along. So these are all, again, first reactions. So, all right, we're going to get a little bit more difficult. We've got a... Uh, this is one that's really going for like the reflections and the realism. Um, I thought Leonardo did okay, but I wanted a cyberpunk samurai standing in a neon lit alley during a rainstorm. We always love the classic rainstorm ones because that's when you get the, uh, the reflections and everything. So let's see here how Leonardo did while Rev is generating. Um, the reflections are great. I love the realism. The signs look a little bit kind of, you know funny um you know because it's a samurai it assumed that it was an asian spot so it has um in the uh you know asian type writing um i love the reflection and the realism here of like the water on the city street i think the samurai looks pretty good there and he's got that kind of cyberpunk mask going on so that's pretty fun um this one again nailed it in that same kind of way actually it's kind of a cool little glow to its samurai um uh sword and that one, the sword's kind of funny. It's doubled up. The face looks a little bit funny. So that one, I'd say, is a little bit of a miss. And this one, again, I think the face looks a little more real on that one. I really love the outfit and the reflections. So Leonardo did great. Let's see what Rev did for us. So, um, wow. All right. I do like that. I like how it... Um, there's still neon in the alley. It's not the building the alley the same kind of way. But I think the samurai looks great. The sword looks awesome. Um, let's see on this one again, eh, double sword. So a little bit of a hallucination there, unless he's, you know, got a sword for each hand. Um, same kind of alleyway where it's not as busy city street. It's more like an alleyway than like a city street. So, but that's a, um, in, in, in an alley was the actual prompt. So again, I think Rev adhered to the prompt that I gave much better than Leonardo. And again, that's what it's trying to tout as its strength. So hats off to you, Rev. That looks really good. This one's cool. I mean, he's got a little bit of a little funniness to the end of this samurai sword, but it gives him a little mysticism. And again, it's an alleyway. It's not a full-on city street. You got the rain, you got the reflections, you got the neon. I mean, I think it hit every bit of the, uh, the prompt that we gave. And lastly, this one, oh yeah, he's got a sheath here. He's got a samurai sword here. This looks like the most photorealistic one. Um, I really like this. I'm actually, all right. So first reactions here, when we're starting to get to the more complex prompt is where it's starting to kind of run away with it. Um, I mean, honestly, comparing Leonardo here, where this isn't quite an alley, it's a street. And um, yeah, I think Rev is way better. All right, I'm excited to give it its final prompt here. This is the most complex one I want to throw at it. So, um, all right, so this one um, is, it's got a lot of different caveats to it. So let's see if it can keep up because I, I know Leonardo struggled. So we've got a steampunk inspired underwater library with glowing jellyfish, coral bookshelves, bronze gears, and a girl in a diving suit reading a glowing manuscript. Woo! That's going to have to handle a lot. So let's see how it does. Let's pop on over Leonardo, see how Leonardo did on this one. And I'd say, okay, I mean, her, her face was kind of not quite right in there. Um, you know, you've got the glowing jellyfish. You've got some steampunk-inspired things where you've got some gears down here and some coral, but little bits. Um, this one, again, she doesn't look right. Not good. Um, this clock looks kind of distorted. So everything, I think it's trying to do too much. I think um, it's it's taking uh, Leonardo kind of off its game. This one looks the best, but the pen is not in the hands. Of course, these hands are a struggle as always. And uh, this one, again, her face kind of just doesn't look right. But I'd say this is the best out of all. This is a very steampunk-inspired, like, device back here. But I'm excited to see what Rev's got for us. So let's see. All right. Oh, it took it literal that it was a girl. They did a little girl in a, in a, in a suit reading a glowing manuscript. It's kind of glowing. We've got the glowing jellyfish. I like that. We've got the golden gears. We've got the steampunk-inspired uh, metal devices over here. 
again, it took this complex prompt and kind of nailed it on all fronts. Um, I think her face looks really, really good. So we didn't have any facial distortions. Um, her hand, again, is a little funny, but that's the nature of hands and AI. So here we are. Um, it can do everything so well, except for just make a hand look good. But I really like the jellyfish. I think they look good. I love the bookshelves. Ooh, Rev, you're doing great. All right, let's keep moving and see what it's got for all four of these. Um, again, a glowing manuscript, glowing jellyfish, the, the golden gears. We've got a coral bookshelf. Whew. Again, really, really good. Um, keep moving. Eh, this one's kind of a miss. Um, so she's not in a, in a suit. She's not in an underwater scene. I mean, the glowing fish. All right, we're, we're halfway there. But you know what? This one, all right, so again, her face looks really good. Her hands are a little disproportionate. I'd say that hand is probably the same size as her face. Uh, the manuscript's not quite glowing, but we do have the, uh, the steampunk-inspired um, elements back here. We've got the coral bookshelves, and we've got the glowing jellyfish, so I mean at least 80% of it. Um, all right, so all in all, if you have something very complex that you're trying to pull off, it looks like Rev.Art is going to be the answer. I mean, this is really good, especially when you take a heavy hitter like Leonardo that, um, in my honest opinion, really started to kind of struggle when you got to these more complex prompts from it. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign off and say that Rev.Art is definitely a winner, um, super good, and uh, an option. And honestly, I didn't even, I just had to make a login. I didn't have to pay for any of this yet. So I wonder just how much it's going to let me do until I get to a, a pay option. And it does look like on any one of these, I should be able to go and download that image. I got a download thing right here. So I'm curious here in real time if I download it and open it up if I'm going to get a watermark or something on there. No pun intended. It's an underwater scene. Um, but no, no watermark at all. I was able to download this image. I got a nice PNG. It's nice and clean. So not even like grok or something like that that throws its grok in the lower corner. This is a watermark free image. Fairly high resolution. Pretty happy with that. So pretty darn good. So I uh, I'll officially sign off on Rev.Art that it's it's awesome. So um, but yeah, Rosh and I we talk every Monday on the Creative AI Show. We're on all the popular their streaming platforms for podcasts and right here on the YouTube channel we're trying to give out all the best advice to all the creatives who are using AI out there and uh, just sharing what we've learned in the world of AI and how we've used it in the past week or month and um, you know so please if you haven't yet like and subscribe to the video for more content like this and until then we're just two creative guys talking to AI